Howdy! Welcome to On the Menu at Shipwreck Sean's. Today, we're going to do Star Trek. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I love Star Trek. I'm a born and bred Star Trek fan. I have family time growing up was watching Next Gen, DS9, Voyager. I am the son of a father who can identify any Star Trek original series episode in like three seconds, who can tell you the guest stars, the title, the synopsis, and any weird trivia. Star Trek is in my blood. When Star Trek came back in 2017, I was ecstatic. All I want is Star Trek. It is my comfort TV show. I've seen every episode. I love Star Trek. Let's make some Star Trek drinks. Let's boldly go and live long and prosper at the bar. So, anyone who has watched Next Gen for any amount of time knows that Captain Picard always orders a tea Earl Grey hot from the replicator. And you have to specify it that way. You can't just be oh, I want some tea, I need tea, I need Earl Grey, and I need hot. So I figured, well, what's the best thing to do with a hot drink? Let's make a hot toddy. So normally, like a hot toddy is going to be whiskey and lemon and maybe some apple jack and then hot water. But I thought, let's make a spiked Earl Grey. So this is a tea Earl Grey spiked, and it's a hot toddy. So first, we're going to be making it in right in our glass, and we've got straight from uh, eBay the kind of glasses that they used on Next Gen that are long, long out of production, but they are great, and they're six ounces. Um, lemon juice, lavender bitters, chartreuse, because it's French, and it's awesome, and Picard is French. And then gin, and I'm using beef eater because we also know the Picards have a streak of English in them. Uh, and if you didn't know that, watch season two of Picard. And then, of course, we've got our tea Earl Grey hot. So we're going to start with uh, two dashes of lavender bitters. Then we're going to do half an ounce of lemon juice because it's not really a hot toddy without some lemon juice then we're going to do one ounce of green chartreuse and for a little bit of body half an ounce of gin though to be fair you can build a cocktail around green chartreuse as like your base spirit because it is 55%. So the gin at 40 something is not really like base, but it works. I was going to give this a quick stir. And then we're going to add our tea. Just give that a stir. And there, like it just came out of the replicator, T Earl Grey spiked. Immediately, you get, you get a lot of tea, you get a lot of lemon. And then you get uh, the herbal notes of the chartreuse and the gin really complimenting the uh, Earl Grey. It's, it's a fun hot toddy. It's definitely not your standard like whiskey hot toddy that you think about as a hot toddy. And clearly, I bet something Captain Picard would have had a nightcap of, unless he was drinking like uh, that green whiskey that him and Scotty had, Ald Aldarian brandy. Um, I'll put what it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really good. So next time you're feeling sick or you need a nightcap, tea, Earl Grey, spiked.
when Star Trek came back in 2017, they announced a whole slate of shows. And the one I was the most worried would suck was going to be this adult animated comedy. Like, Star Trek didn't need to be Rick and Morty. It turns out Lower Decks is now my favorite new track. And probably the character I identify the most with is Bradward Boimler. Because at heart, I am Boimler. I married a Mariner. I'm a Boimler. So let's make a bold Boimler. Because the third season, he was bold Boimler. So of course, this drink is A, overcomplicated, and B, purple, like his hair. So we start with, we have Empress Jen. This is a purple gen. It changes color when there's citrus, but there's enough color in this drink that it'll still look very purple. It's got a nice floral flavor to it. Then we have got uh, Umi, which is this plum liqueur that is really good. It can be hard to find. I had to go to Florida to a, a whole uh, Total Wine to find this. I haven't seen it on any of the uh, mail order websites yet, like Curiata. But eventually it'll pop up. But you might be able to find this. Otherwise, you'll just have to wait on making a bold boy more. We've got dry curacao. This will give us kind of this dry, orangey flavor. We've got allspice dram, which is pimento. This is fall in a glass. We have some lime juice. We have some simple syrup. And since this is technically a sour, we have an egg white to give us this nice, foamy, frothy head. If you're a vegan or you don't do eggs in your cocktails, you can use aquafaba for the same effect. And then, because we're going to be extra, we're going to put a delta on the top of this because everything, everything in Lower Decks has deltas. So we've got some edible glitter for our delta. Now, this drink is a little complicated, so I am going to be consulting my notes. Boimler would be proud. All right. We're going to start with two ounces of our Empress. Pouring, pouring, pouring. Two ounces. This is kind of a large drink. So, you know, but it's fun. Then we have got an ounce and a half of this uh, Umi. Uh, this has got a really nice, sweet plum flavor to it. Then we've got three quarters of an ounce of dry curacao, kind of to tamp down some of the uh, sweet that we have just put in here and give it a little complexity. And speaking of complexity, let's go ahead and add half an ounce of our allspice dram. Almost everything is made better by some allspice dram. Then we have got three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Again, citrus just helps everything. It pulls down sweetness. It helps kind of round everything out. Then we have got half an ounce of simple syrup. All right, I dropped that. And then last but not least, we have our egg white. Just going to kind of, haha, possibly the easiest separation I've ever done. All right. Now, since we have an egg white, we're going to dry shake this first. And you dry shake just to kind of emulsify the egg white inside the cocktail and to kind of give it that head before you put the ice in. All right. Now we're going to put in our ice. Give it another good, good solid shake. And then, because this is a little large, we're going to go ahead and put this in a uh, margarita glass. Also, because on lower decks, everything they drink comes out of margarita glasses from the replicator.
then we're going to let this head settle just a little bit and then we're going to put our delta on top of it and for that we've got ourselves a little pattern okay <laughs> all right glitter and a delta will it work let's see moment of truth there we have a delta okay so putting the delta on is a little messy and always remember with edible glitter follow glitter rules of it will get everywhere but there you have a bold boimler all right i'm gonna gingerly drink this to try to preserve the really cool delta um mm. you get gin you get plum you get that nice allspice it's like it's complicated, but it's very simple. It's the epitome of Brad Boimler, of there's a lot in it, and it works all kind of well, but maybe there's a little too much. So there you have a bold Boimler. All right, so this is a cellular peptide cake with mint frosting. So if you remember the season seven episode, Phantasms, of Next Generation when Data is dreaming, there's a point where they go into 10 forward and Riker's drinking out of Dr. Crusher's skull with a straw and uh, Deanna Troy is a chocolate cake with, as Worf loves to remind us, mint frosting. Uh, it's a cellular peptide cake which goes into the like weird alien bit that is causing Data to dream. Uh, because it's a weird, it's one of those season seven episodes where uh, shit got weird, like this, masks, uh, the one with the train on the holodeck. I know people give the seventh season of Next Gen some crap for not being as good as three through six. That's the first season I remember watching growing up, like every episode as they were new. And I love them. And I love the let's get real weird on the Enterprise episodes. And Phantasms is one of those episodes. So let's go ahead and make a cellular peptide cake with mint frosting. Well, what's in it? Uh, we've got some lemon juice, brandy, creme de cacao, because it can't be a Counselor Troy cake without chocolate. We've got green chartreuse, which is our uh, cellular peptide. And then we have mint frosting. So this is uh, heavy cream, uh, sugar, and rumple mints, and some food coloring, and it's you know whipped until it is heavy cream. Editing Sean will show you how to make that now. That is one cup of heavy cream. We need one shot of rumple. And we need four tablespoons of powdered sugar. Whip into whipped cream. Cool, we're back. All right, so let's go ahead and make this drink. So it starts out, it is one ounce of brandy. I find if ever you're making a dessert cocktail, you're best base spirits are brandy or cognac they just they do what you want all right next we are going to do one and a half ounces of our creme de cacao i'm using tempest fugit which is a really uh strong funky chocolate if you can't find this any uh creme de cacao will work white or dark it doesn't really matter then we need half an ounce of our green chartreuse. This is going to bring a real fun, like kind of herbal, minty, uh, just complex note to the drink. I like to consider this the cellular peptide part. And then we need half an ounce of uh, lemon juice. This just kind of 
helps bring everything together. Ice in your tin. Close your pineapple. Give that a good shake. We get our coupe glass out of the freezer. Always freeze your coupe. And then, because we need frosting, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some of this cream on top of this drink. And how much you want to put on here is totally up to you. Does make it a little messy. Mm. Again, the cream is boozy because it has rumple in it. And then in honor of Counselor Troy, we're gonna grade just a little chocolate over that and there you have a cellular peptide cake with mint frosting mm, that is overloaded with a little too much mint frosting but you get chocolate and brandy and mint and this just complex herbal from the chartreuse this is a a messy but really fun dessert drink. Mm. The kind of thing that you would have in a dream. So this is the part of the show where we bring in my wife Elizabeth and she tries our drinks. And uh, Lieutenant Tilly has decided to join us today. So let's go ahead and we'll start with our uh, tea, Earl Grey, spiked. Mm, that's nice. Um, you get the Earl Grey, and then, um, almost like, is it whiskey? I don't know. It's no, nice. there's chartreuse in there. Oh. Okay. I think that some of the complexity and herbalness of the chartreuse is being lost. Okay. But it's good. Um, it's very, like, relaxing and calming and kind of delicious, and I really like Something you would you would drink if you were sick? Oh yeah, absolutely. I feel like that would make me feel better if I All was right. sick. Here we have our bold boimler. That is a lot of edible glitter. I always think edible glitter is going to give me cancer. I know it's not, but it just looks like the consumption of microplastics <laughs> freaks me out. But the delta is cool. the delta is perfect, and it is a very cool color. And I like it. The glitter is kind of streaming down. Okay, um, it's subtler actually than the last one. It's giving uh, sweetness. It's a little bit creamy. I'm getting uh, like fruity. Um, the purple makes me think plum, so I'm yep. guessing that's what we're it's got doing. Plum liqueur, uh, in it. a and... little acidic, um, mm -hmm. but nice. It's not heavy or comp. It feels very. It feels very Boimler. Yeah, who's giving like uh, what's the main guy on Scrubs? Uh, JD. Uh, JD. You know how JD, it gives me a drink that JD could consume <laughs> comfortably, which kind of has the same Boimler vibes. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. And then here we have our cellular peptide cake with mint frosting, That's... as Worf was very uh, enthusiastic about. Honestly, it's horrifying in, pre in presentation. Yeah, yeah. I could have. I needed a squeeze bag. It's kind of like the food in Hook. It's <laughs> what <laughs> the, the uh, whipped cream on top is, is uh, evoking. Make sure you get some of the cream. Okay. It's chocolatey. Yeah. That's surprisingly creamy for something that doesn't look creamy. And I did not get a ton of the frosting. Ah. I mean, it has to be chocolate. The cake was made out of Deanna Troy. That's true. It's chocolatey. Um, it's got a little 
sourness in it for something it has chocolatey. a little lemon in it mm-hmm. but it's not curdling which is interesting uh the whipped cream's amazing yeah i'm not <laughs> um it just looks horrifying but yeah, uh, okay. other than that it's good it tastes very good hmm who am i gonna take today i'm gonna take this one okay you and tilly are gonna take your tea I think and, me and go you are going to take tea and go all right. Well, that's our episode of Shipwreck Sean's On the Menu. Uh, like, subscribe, and all that. And come back next week. We are going to go have a night at the uh, Green Dragon and do Lord of the Rings. Peace. Or I guess live long and prosper. <laughs>